It's obvious that ESCOM CEO Andre Dereta is a man under enormous pressure. ESCOM has been unable to keep the lights on for well over a decade. Matters have become so bad that government stepped in to overhaul the utilities board. Some critics also want Dereta's head. And former statistician general uh, Dr. Padi Lehotla says Dereta himself doesn't have the necessary skills to revive the failing power utility and must be relieved of his duties. Dr. Lehotla joins me now in conversation. And Dr. Lehotla, I read your piece. In fact, the, the title there, and I don't know if you are responsible for the headline, says, Have a Heart and relieve um, uh, Dereta of his burden so he and South Africa can see the light. What's led you to this conclusion that he is not suitable for this? It's a call that many people are making, um, and some would say it's an easy call to make, but I imagine that you've put quite a great deal of thought into it and have come to the conclusion that this is the step that must be taken. Well, uh, for starters, ESCOM is an engineering uh, entity. To make that engineering entity an economic business uh, entity requires economics. You need to follow the logic of engineering to make it economically viable. It therefore, at the heart of it, it has an organic chemistry of economics and engineering. The rest of the people that have to look at legal matters like lawyers as the writer is, are peripheral to the business of ESCO, which is power generation and making that economically viable. You may actually appoint a person like the writer at times of peace. When things are working, you will not even recognize that you don't have an engineer at the top. But at the level at which ESCOM is finally sinking, you need an engineer who understands all the technicalities around ESCOM to lead that space. Mm. You wouldn't go to a brain surgeon or you wouldn't go to a lawyer for your head to be operated upon. You will actually go to a brain surgeon. ESCOM requires a brain surgeon and that person must lead it. There are several ramifications of a professional nature that is anchored in the profession of engineering itself that the writer is not capable to communicate or deal with. He'll have to get an interpreter for him to understand the discussion. At this stage, it is about the nitty gritty of that discussion of how power stations are functioning. You wouldn't put me there at ESCOM, I would fail this man. It is important, therefore, to respect the dignity of the writer and relieve him of this serious problem. Yeah. As the new board gets appointed, so we learn that uh, his car is actually bugged with uh, some machine in it. The companies, as we hear, uh, say that uh, that's a, a, that device is a tracking device that is uh, installed in any car. Now you find that uh, there's a lot of speed and the attention around electricity has to be distracted by uh, some false alarm around uh, some instrument that it is in his car. Who technicians say it's a tracking device. I don't know how far true that is. Yeah. But certainly you do not expect uh, attention to be focused on the writer's personal security when we have a serious security around electricity. That's what? a distraction. Not that his life doesn't matter, it does. Yeah. Dr. Lehutla, what will you to say? To draw attention to this. What will you say to those who say, we've tried this before, it's becoming a bit like the Bafana Bafana job, that when things go wrong, you fire the coach. We've had no less than 10 CEOs at ESCOM, and it may not have been under the radar, and the issue was not the fact that these were not engineers, some of them actually may have had an engineering background, but it all came down to the same situation. So what will you say to those who say, the problem is beyond the CEO. The problem is a problem of policy, uh, of the shareholder, as well as the government in, in making um, you know, 
energy smart decisions that will infuse more energy into our grid? The key person that executes is uh, the CEO. Yes, government has meddled up, has messed up, has come completely. But it is the CEO who will, who will make it work. And that CEO must have the technical skills to make it work. From 2011, thereabout, the government started appointing people who are not engineers completely in a situation, in an environment which was facing a crisis. Having destroyed already the, 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 the secondary layer at ESCOM, having had people leave ESCOM who are competent because the investment uh, decisions around ESCOM were beginning to, 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 to wane. We didn't know where we were going, both in nuclear and uh, new fire powered, uh, new coal fire powered uh, stations. So ESCOM is broken and it can only be constructed by engineers. You've got to go back uh, to what its form is by appointing almost 10 CEOs except Marcela Gogo, who was an engineer, over that period, it was actually running ESCOM down. And you cannot now appoint a non-engineer when we actually have to bring ESCOM to life. The best that government can do is to relieve, uh, and the board can do, is to relieve the writer of this burden. All right. You need somebody who understands engineering and who can talk to counterparts. All right. And Dr. Paddy Lehot. An engineering demos. Yeah. Dr. Paddy Lehot, I've got to thank you for your time and weighing in on this conversation. It's a raging conversation uh, at the moment as the new board takes over at ESCOM. That is former statistician general there, Dr. Paddy Lehotla.